Welcome to my YouTube channel, A Brainery of Seven. In this lecture, I am going to solve the sixth assignment of matrix methods of structural analysis. You can see first question. He has given an information regarding a frame. Consider the portal frame below and answer the following questions related to the frame in the figure. Axial rigidity of the member A is equal to 6 unit and axial rigidity of the member EI. So generally he has given here it is axial rigidity. It is not axial rigidity. EI means it is flexural rigidity. So flexural rigidity is 18 units. Axial rigidity is 6 units. Okay. So now he has given a frame uh, that has been fixed at A and C and provided a rigid support at B and he himself has assigned the number of coordinates 1, 2, 3 at A and 4, 5, 6 at B and 7, 8, 9 at C. Okay. So now the first question is what is the number of kinematic indeterminacy of the frame? So the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame is equal to the number of independent displacements at all the joints in a structure is called degree of kinematic indeterminacy. Now coming to the given frame there are three joints. So the first one is A, B, C. A is a fixed joint. So there is no displacement possible at A. That is the value of degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 0 at A and the value of degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 0 at C. Now coming to the value of degree of kinematic indeterminacy at B that is at rigid joint is 3. These three values are delta xA, delta xB, delta yB, delta xB, delta yB and theta b. That is horizontal displacement at B and vertical displacement at B. The another possible displacement is rotation of the members meeting at joint B. Okay. So this is the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the given frame. So answer B for question number 1. Now coming to what will be the size of the global stiffness matrix. Generally we have assigned the number of coordinates in the given frame from 1 to 9. So as the degree of kinematic indeterminacy corresponding to the given frame it will be 3 but we need to get 9 columns by 9 rows in a matrix. So we will get 9 by 9 matrix as we have assigned 9 coordinates in the frame. Answer C for question number 2. Now what is the local stiffness matrix for member BC? So now coming to member BC, this is member BC. He has assigned coordinates. This is 4, this is 5 and this is 6. This is 7 and this is 8 and this is 9. Okay. So for member BC, there are 6 coordinates. We will get 6 by 6 matrix. First of all, these coordinates at joint B and joint C are related to one is horizontal deflection that is axial rigidity along the axis of the member. So that is A, E by L. We need to calculate. Generally, A, E value given in the frame is 6 and L is equal to 6. We will get it is 1. And when we apply certain displacement or certain settlement at any joint, we will get support reactions as 12 EI by L cube. That is 12 EI value he has given it is 18. L cube is 6 cube. We will get again here it is 1. And the bending moment at each joint produced because of any unit deflection is 6 EI by L square. 6 EI is 18 by L square is 6 square. You will get it is 3. Now coming to 4 EI by L is a stiffness factor. 4 into 18 divided by 6 that is 12. And 2 EI by L it will be 2 into 18 divided by 6 that is 6. By using all this you know all the 6 by 6 matrix only these elements will be possible. If you solve all the rows and columns, we will get answer as this.
So we need to assign coordinates 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The matrix are 1, double, 0, minus 1, double, 0 and 0, 1, 3, 0, minus 1, 3, 0, 3, 12, 0, minus 3, 6, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, double, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 3, 0, 1, minus 3, 0, 3, 6 and 0, 0, 12. Okay. So, this will be the matrix. So, answer C for question number 3. Coming to question number 4. So, by solving this, actually AB member is a vertical member. So, this is A and this is B. He, uh, he himself has assigned coordinates 1, 2 and this is 3. And here it is 4, 5 and it is 6. So, lambda x we will get it is 0, lambda y we will get it is minus 1. Earlier problems how we will get lambda we can recognize very easily. Okay. So, now lambda x and lambda y. So, lambda x, lambda y here finally you will get the answer as answer C for question number 4. Now, coming to question number 5. This is also same as the question number 3. So, answer C for question number 5. Now, coming to question number 6. When we arranged the global status matrix completely, we will get certain by eliminating certain rows and certain columns. We will get a short 3 by 3 matrix because the degree of indeterminacy is 3 corresponding to these three values of degree of kinematic indeterminacy, we will get generally this is P is equal to K delta or else P is equal to KU. For this we will get answer as option C for question number 6. Now coming to question number 7. What is the sub matrix KUU when the order of UUU is 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3. So corresponding to degree of freedom or degree of kinematic indeterminacy of 789 and 1, 2, 3. So, we will get the answer for question number 7 is B. Okay. And now, coming to what is the vector of known forces in the order of 4, 5, 6. So, here the known forces P, K corresponding to 4, 5, 6. Actually, this is at joint B. This is 4. This is 5 and this is 6. In the given figure, there is no horizontal load. So, that's why it is 0. There is no vertical load. That's why it is 0. And there is a moment at giant B. So, that moment is corresponding to the coordinate 6. So, that's why I have written at 6. It is 100. 0, 0, 100. Okay. So, answer C for question number 8. Now coming to question number 9, what will be the known degree of freedom in the order of 4, 5, 6? Generally, in the earlier problem, we got the stiffness matrix 2, 0, 3, 0, 2, 3 and 3, 3, 24 and degrees of freedom D1 and D2 and D3. So, this will be equal to force vector that is 0, 0, 100. By solving all these equations, multiply 2 D1 plus 0 plus 3d3 is equal to 0. 0 d1 plus 2 d2 plus 3 d3 is equal to 0. And 3 d1 plus 3 d3 plus 24 d3 is equal to 100. Okay, by solving all these equations, we will get d1 is equal to 10, d2 is equal to minus 10, and d3 is equal to 6.67. Clear? So the answer C for question number 9. And coming to question number 10, so it is very lengthy question, we need to solve and analyze. I am just giving you the answer, uh, answer A for question number 10. So generally, uh, to face NPTEL exam, you need to practice each and every assignment in all the lectures, in all the previous lectures. I am providing the link for each and every assignment in the description. Okay. Please subscribe and solve all the questions. 
to clear your NPTEL exam. Thank you.